Oh man, I love fall time when the trees change color and it's time to harvest corn. Let's get to it. So I need to drive back here. So basically, we kind of extended our demo hours on our 8250. You might know it as Optimus Bind. Uh, a kind of a deal was struck with the dealership. They said if I would transport it back to the dealer, they would basically uh, allow me to run it a few more hours. So I did get through wheat harvest and soybean harvest, but it is due to be turned back in. I can't use any more hours, or otherwise I'm going to have to purchase the hours, which I can't really afford. We did end up selling one of our Mack trucks up here. So lucky for us, we did get another Mack truck in so we got another red Mack truck in, but because we sold it, we got some money. We sold it for 200000 The only issue is uh, all that money basically went back into the bank. So 40000 of that went back into the bank. I really like to have two combines to be able to... Uh, harvest with so gonna have to be looking around for some possible purchases we can do but we need to get a trailer and go get our uh, combine on it and take it back to the dealer I think I'm gonna take old blue here all right so we're pulling out of the yard here we got we got big old blue going so we got our trailer loaded up, so we're going to head down, go pick up Optimus Bind. Sad, sad day. That combine really did great on the harvesting of the wheat, barley, and the soybeans, so I'm going to miss that combine. That was a good combine. It seems like a lot of people they don't like how I say combine, sorry. They yell at me, say I say it wrong. Oh well, just the way I say it, it's my accent, so. All right, so we're gonna pull into our yard. Our combine is actually still sitting over there where we left it. So we're gonna try to find a good spot where we can load it and hopefully turn around, uh-oh. Now that I'm in here, I'm a little bit worried. I might get stuck. Ooh, don't hit the branches. This actually looks like a pretty flat place to park it. All right, this is a sad, sad moment. Here's the 8250. It really served us well. Really like them giant floater tires that basically had it really floated across that uh, surface easily. Uh, the head obviously worked good so we're gonna pick that up and take that to the dealership with our truck so we'll get that unfolded but this is a sad day. I was hoping to hopefully uh, seal the deal on this but it was just too much for our farm for right now. It is just I mean between this and the 8120, this thing is almost worth three times the 8120 we purchased. Don't tell Buck, but we stole this 8120, or B spine, as I like to call it. Aunt Miss Spine over here. Sorry, I can't put it in the books right now, but maybe one day these two brothers will be put back together but today they're gonna be taken apart so let's get this thing started up of course it starts right up it's a nice hot day today 69 degrees so I'm gonna get it out over here unfold the header here quickly 
We'll unfold this. All right, so we got the header unhooked finally. Thing had a little, uh, like it didn't want to leave the farm or something. It definitely was attached hard. So we're gonna drive this up on here. Definitely gotta use the flashes when you're driving this thing. It's a little wide. What do they say? I think it's nine foot wide. You can't drive on the highway. So we're basically gonna have to not find a cop anywhere close. Uh, sure. Probably need to fold it up though, dummy. Turn this on so we can have the hydraulics. We'll fold this up. There we go. And that's a good looking combine. Alright, turn it off for the last time until we get to the dealer. Alright, so now we need to line this up and hopefully get this off in the road. Oh, I guess I forgot. I think I was supposed to uh, combine a strip of uh, Jake's uh, soybeans over here so I can put it in my bin. It was only just to get a road back to my field. I kind of forgot to do that. I'll have to do that later on. Shh, no one tell Jake. All right, so we need to have our flashers on. We're going to hit this road. So we're a little bit wide to be driving on the highway. Pretty sure it's nine foot wide in Iowa, but oh well. My plan is to actually go over there to Squad, see if he has a nice old... Uh-oh, what do we got here? Uh-oh. We got a cop stop there. Stop in the middle of the road. I didn't see anybody around. Hopefully they didn't run off. But my plan is basically to go over to Grant's uh, dealership here. Just check out. I want to see if he has a uh, nice harvester here. Oh, what is that right there? What do we got over there? Hmm. Let's pull over here to the side and just check this place out. He has got some giant old grain carts here. Wow. Some nice grain carts he has here. Looks like he has one there in the back too. Got a couple heads there too. Couple 12 row heads. What is this up on here on the mount? Oh, an S790. What does he got over here? An S680. Got a lot of nice, uh, let's see if Grant can give us a deal here quickly. I don't have a lot of money if you can see that. I don't think I can afford a S680. We'll see though. Let's see what we can do. Uh, well, that's out of our price range, basically. He did say we can demo it, but I just don't think we can even have the money. Maybe I'll have to take him up on demoing his uh, S680 down there, but uh, it's just so much hassle getting it back and forth. I don't know if it's worth it, but let's go get this uh, red machine off of this John Deere lot. Looks like... Uh, Grant over there started harvesting his own corn. That's good. Didn't think he, uh, see his field of soybeans over by my house. Still isn't harvested, so he still needs to harvest some. He still has a lot of crops in the field, that's for sure. So we're just going to pull through the city of Moore here. Ah, are we actually passing Casey's there? Yeah, we're gonna pass Casey's just this one time. I don't know if we might pass, we might stop on the way back. Oh, whoa, you guys see that? Is that an R75? I remember driving them when I was a kid. Oh man, I'm gonna have to see if this thing is for sale. We're gonna turn this guy around. I just have to 
stop in. I know I shouldn't probably be stopping with a uh, big harvester on the back of my semi, but it's harvest time. We need to make a deal quick. I'm going to pull into the back over here, and I'll probably just park this over here in the gas station, and I'm going to run in there and see if I can, uh, what they have that listed for. All right. Wow. Look at that gray machine. So a lot of people call these the lunchbox because the way they look. I basically cut my teeth in one of these. So this is basically my first combine I ever got to drive. Combining corn, harvesting corn was my one of my very young tasks, but mine was actually an R72. This is an R75, so this is a really good version of Gleaner. Man, that thing looks good. And I tell you what, it has a folding corn head. I've been look had my eye out on one of these Capello. I just love the looks of these. Just gray and black just looks good to me. A lot of people don't like these Gleaner looks, but I like it. Man. Tires look good on there too. I mean, tires basically about new. I don't see nothing really wore too bad on it. That head basically, I don't know, that thing might be brand new. It even has uh, stock stompers on it. Hmm. It's going to be a hard, hard choice. I'm going to have to see if I can seal this deal or not. I even got rid of my other combine already. Whew. He wants 165 for the pair. 165. Basically, when I talk about pair, I'm talking about the harvester in the header. He said he gave me the keys. Let's let's see. So this is an older harvester. I think was this in the 90s? This was made maybe the early 2000s see if everything works here looks good let's see if the separator works here yep turning on let's go outside here and see if everything's running so it is kind of weird because these things uh, actually fling all the main chaff out this one side so the rotor on these things is actually sideways and not straight through the combine. So a little bit different. Got to stay away from this head. It's running. See how the hydraulics are here? Wow. That's fast for folding that corn head. So basically, I'm really happy that this thing isn't too heavy they actually said that they put weights in the rear the prior owner so the corn heads kind of heavy for this old gleaner combine but being they put the weights and everything it bounces out so you have a really good steering you know what it's a done deal it's mine now so paying a pretty good amount for this corn head so these corn heads aren't cheap so this corn head might actually be more expensive than the combine itself. So you get this all the way up front, man. I'm surprised it doesn't hit the windshield, but and down. So the good thing is, is we got the harvester in the pocket now. We're gonna go pay the man quickly, and uh, basically we already got the trailer down here. That worked out, huh? We just got to unload that harvester, load our new harvester. Man, which guy, which one would you rather prefer, the 8250 or the Gleaner? Hmm. That's a hard That's a hard choice. That or that. You know, for me, the nostalgic of the Gleaner outweighs that 8250 but that 8250 is one heck of a machine that thing is nice this gleaner has it's close to my heart all right it's ours it's in the books 
So the good thing about these gleaners, they're really light. If you didn't know, they're actually one of the lightest combines out there, so should be no problem whatsoever for us to pull that back. Way lighter than that 8250, that's for sure. So I'm going to jump over here and get into our... Finally take this harvester back and then uh, hopefully... Oh, is Buck over here? Where's Buck at? I think that's his truck. Man, I wonder if he broke down. That's definitely his truck. I didn't see Buck. Well, all right. He's going, going to go say hi to Buck. So let's finally get this harvester to the back to the dealer so we don't get charged any extra hours. Come back and pick up our brand new, or new to us, gleaner. All right, so it's kind of odd. There's no one driving around on these roads, but we just got our uh, Optimus Bind unloaded. We're going to go over here and load up. All right. So, good thing is, is even with this folding head here, I think it will be at the, about the same weight as that 8250. That 8250 definitely was one heck of a machine, so we're definitely not going to be this wide. I'll tell you that for sure. So, I want it not too far back, but not too far to the front. That corn head is definitely heavy, so I'm going to do, I think right there is a good area. I think that should be about balance for it, so we can start heading back. Alright, so it's official, we're driving it off a lot, or pulling it off a lot. Ooh, got a little close to that fence. Don't want to get too close. Man. I love the way a gleaner looks. Man, we are behind, so we need to get home and start harvesting. Can you believe I'm driving by Casey's again? I know. I need to get back and uh, get this thing and hopefully get this right into the field. So I'm going to take this back to the farmyard quickly, grease it up, look it over, run it a little bit, and take it right to the field. Man, do I like the looks of that gleaner on the back of this thing. Whoo! Thing looks sexy. Sexy, ain't no lunchbox to me. Sorry, Grant. Your green paint was just too much for the pocketbook. Maybe one day, maybe one day. I do like that green paint. Do really like that green paint. At least now, I don't think people will give me so much uh, a hard time. All my neighbors give me a hard time with all that red paint on the farmyard. So, right now, at least I'm not fully red painted out. So we're actually going to take this all the way back to our farmyard. Unload it there. Probably park our trailer. And uh, hopefully everything checks out good and we can get right to harvesting right across the road here. Looks like Grant still has the soybeans over there. Hopefully I can get into that field. That's the plan. That's the master plan. We'll see if it works. Come on, Kenworth. You can do it. Get up that hill. Get. Come on. Get on out. Get on out of here. All right, so now we're up here, we're nice and flat ground. We can unhook our trailer here. Got to pull these pins here quickly. All right, so now we're unhooked. Drive ahead here. We'll just drive a little bit ahead. Got to take that old truck back. Maybe somebody might see it on the side of the road and purchase it. So we're going to back this up. Hmm. Didn't plan that out too well, did I? Kind of parked that truck right where I need to go. Oh well. Starts up. That's pretty good for a 15-year-old machine. Maybe a, maybe a 20-year-old. This might be 20 years old. I don't know for sure there. Uh, I guess uh, I'll have to move the truck here quickly. So I want to pull it in here and just give it a once over. Ooh, 
guys notice something? We got matching here. Oh, workhorse matches our new harvester. So basically, Agco owned Gleaner or bought out Gleaner way back in the day. So Agco also owned white tractors back in the day. I'm gonna take this old Kenworth back to the dealership, park it, and I'm gonna grab the Thunder Tank. It's a good thing about having a dealership. You can basically uh, drive any truck you want. So we will get our combines greased up, filled up with diesel, look the gleaner over really quick just to make sure we're not gonna have any immediate problems. Uh oh, Gina, I need to feed you. Here you go. Here you go, Gina. Eat up. Sorry about that, I forgot. If you didn't know, Gina's a watchdog. Gina's just a trick name. Or you think, oh, that's a nice name. Gina. Can't be mean. And right when I'm pulling up here, I just remembered. Old Beast Bind needs to get the corn head put on. Man, I'm behind. I need to get to it. So we will just fill up from the gas tank there. Uh, we'll go get Beast Bind quickly here. We'll have to drop the head and basically go pick up the corn head quickly so we can start in the field. So what I like to do when I'm using the Thunder Creek trailer is you have to open all your doors Blare your radio, get it nice and loud, and play Thunder Roll with the Thunder. So we'll fill up Beast Spine here quickly. Beast Spine is a beast, it takes a lot of fuel. Alright, let's get the corn head on this thing. Oh man, I just remember. I gotta move that auger. Oh man. Yep, gonna have to move that auger there quickly. But I think we'll go get the corn head here first. So, if you didn't know, uh, a lot of you guys like naming my combine. So, if you have a name for uh, our new combine gleaner that isn't Lunchbox, that, uh, if you have something, a name for it, just let me know. I'd like to name it, because uh, it's pretty cool having a name. I just like naming my combines. That's what we did when I was growing up. We named our machine. I think we called our gleaner the silver bullet. But you'll have to let me know what you guys think. Also, if you like this video, smash that like button. I know I don't say that a lot, but I, I try not to overload you repeatedly saying it over and over again but if you like it smash that like button so update I still haven't figured out what's going on with the 1480 I think I have a, like a short circuit in the auger or something uh, I don't actually have a corn head for it so we're not going to be picking corn anyways for with it definitely can't handle a 12 wall head but it's unfortunate but oh well all right so now we got the gleaner parked out of the shed oh i gotta see some just gotta see how these two compare next to each other hmm and it's about the same height you can definitely tell the beast has a lot more metal in it got a lot more weight to it I think th this is actually considered an 8 series combine and this is a 7 series if not a 6 series all right I just remembered this corn head is not easy getting out of here and that's unfortunate all right we got it hooked up I know we got a John Deere corn head on a case combine but you know what fits and it works that's all that matters. John Deere's makes one heck of a head. Don't worry, we still got plenty of red on the farm here. Uh-oh. 
What? Oh. Are you gonna be able to make this? Wow. Did you see that? Did you see that? Couldn't do that again if I tried, that's for sure. I gotta not hit this uh, overhang here. There we go. Uh, I think I'm just gonna try to turn around this way. Here we go. So, got these greased up. I'm gonna take them both down to the field here quickly. Of course, I think I'm gonna start with the old, our new combine going around here first. And I'll get in, start in with the beast. All right, I gotta unfold down them snouts. Gotta do these one at a time. All right, that's the last snout. Got them all folded down now. All right, now I'm gonna run back here and get the gleaner. I just have to see how that thing works in the field. Just purchase it, gotta try it. So I like to idle down, start that separator. All right, got that thing started up. First corn harvest of 2020, I guess. This thing's doing good. Ooh, we're getting about 210 bushels per acre. That's really good. Good for this area. Good for the dry land, I should say. Man, I'm leaving ears back there. Can't be doing that. Can't be leaving ears. It's like we're gonna have to still move that uh, auger over here quickly. I think I'll get a full bin load before I go over there and move it. I think I'm gonna shut it, the separator down, shut this down. So basically, I gotta go move the auger here quickly. So we're gonna move that quickly. Kind of have to move a whole bunch of stuff around. Man, am I feeding the deer out here or something? Kind of missed a lot of ears here. Hmm, trying to think where the best position to put this auger maybe if I put the auger right here be the best position to have it and then I can just back the truck should be able to drive the semis right there so I'll move our uh, Dodge here first all right we'll start up the semi get that air pressure building up while we move the grain cart over, fold in that auger. All right, so we're gonna move this. I'll probably park it underneath the spout here quickly. Unload the gleaner. So I basically forgot to tell you, so we're running about at just over 15%. So we can put it into our bin so. so this thing's done building up uh, air pressure so we'll pull it ahead I think that's far enough out of the way yeah that should be good so now I'll park this in the back good old international starts right up so I think I'm not going to lower it I'm just gonna go really slow and try to uh, move it over to the other bin. Alright, so we're backing this auger up here. Whew! It's starting to worry me that thing's at such a tilt. There we go. A little bit further. Alright, so now I gotta try to get that truck hopefully parked in there. Think the auger's good there. Ooh, this might be kind of tricky. Gotta back this old Peterbilt all the way back there. 
Alright, so I think I finally got it backed up. Ooh, that was hard. Yep, looks good, I think. So I think we're ready. Now we just got to uh, get back into our gleaner. Start harvesting. Not leave it for the deer. Turn that separator back on. Alright. Get this thing running. Gotta get the hired hand over there on B Spine there quickly. There goes B Spine taking off. I think I'm gonna do one more headland before I start cutting in. Let B Spine cut a pass there. Still getting about 210 bushels per acre. That's really good. Happy with that, that's for sure. So this isn't a very big field. I'm thinking we'll probably just finish with this field for tonight. Kind of got delayed today with purchasing a combine, getting that combine ready. We had to switch beast spine over to corn. Just we had to change over. Oh, that's where beast spine's cutting a pass. We had to change beast spine. Or we had to move the auger over to uh, our corn bin. So we're working beside our bee spine over there. Don't think I'm gonna even really move the grain cart around much. So it's not really a big enough field to pay for unloading on the go. Doesn't really help much. Looks like bee spines over there unloading. We're still running over here, Beast Spine. So you know. So this actually has a uh, grain tank uh, extension on the top, so it holds 400 bushels. So I think Beast Spine holds just a little bit more. But for the year this thing was made, it definitely holds a pretty good amount. Oh man, it's like we lost left the stock over there. I'm leaving stocks all over the place. It's a good looking uh, beast over there. Which one do you guys like more? Which one do you think looks cooler? The Gleaner? The R75? Or the Beast? Alright, so I gotta take the grain cart over. So we're a little bit down on hired help today. We're going to take this over and unload it quickly. This 8400 just perfect on this grain cart. Just pulls us up these hills just perfectly. Not too big, not too small. It does seem like it's a little underweight though when you're going down hills. Just it, this grain cart is probably more adequate for uh something like a quad track or something articulated tractor something on that size so just a little bit more weight in the arse all right the tractor's running we're unloading grain now first grain in this tank let's just look in here looks like beast spines up here unloading Again, so it finished that side of the field, so it's not taking long. So we still got two more fields of corn to do here. Looks like uh, we might have to be helping out some of our neighbors around here too. I'm really impressed with this Capella head. It's working nicely. Uh, it's definitely good in down corn. Our corn has some really good stance see B spine looks like he's cutting another pass over there but we got a really good stance this year so we're really fortunate we don't have no down corn which I'm sure the deer around here are kind of upset about but oh well so these are really short rolls here so we're having to back up probably should have did another headland pass just to make it easier I have to make sure we don't run into our building or anything. But 
oh well, not a very big field, so it won't take us long. Beast Spine's over there running. I know, Beast Spine has a green corn head, but that thing is working good. Looks like we should get this little. We've just got 12 rows, and then we just got that sliver over there, what Beast Spine's working on. Oh, these are the last, what, three rows here of this field. Don't think I'm going to uh, go to the next field. So, but thank you all for watching, and I will see you later here in Iowa for the corn harvest. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share, and subscribe. See you next time.